Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to learn about an important theory of matter that is Dalton's Atomic Theory, which is first of its kind. John Dalton was a kind of person who was a teacher as well as a researcher. And finally, in the year of 1808, he presented his atomic theory, which proved to be a turning point in the study of matter. He strongly seemed to believe that when we divide, go on dividing matter, we finally reach a stage where further division is not possible. And it, it is this stage which he called as an atom. So let us now look at his postulates that he has suggested in his theory. The first postulate of Dalton's atomic theory says that all the matter in this universe is made up of tiny particles which are atoms. For example, the aluminium foil is made up of aluminium atoms, the tip of a pencil is made up of carbon atoms and the copper coins are composed of copper atoms whereas gold coins are composed of gold atoms. The next postulate that is the second postulate says that atoms are indivisible particles which cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. It essentially means that we cannot divide an atom further smaller or we can put it in an another way that we cannot have a particle which is smaller than an atom or the atom is the smallest particle that we can ever find. It, always, it also says that we cannot create a new atom or we cannot even destroy an atom that is already existing. However, we see that when these atoms happen to take part in a chemical reaction, at the end they produce a completely new substance which we call a product. But does it mean that we have formed a new atom out of these? No, certainly not. It is, it is because there is always a rearrangement of atom. There is not formation of a new atom or destruction of the atoms that are already there. For example, two, at two molecules of hydrogen combine with a molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of water. In this example, we can clearly see that there is simply the rearrangement of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. There is no formation of a new atom or destruction of the already existing atoms. So let us now move on to our third postulate. The third postulate of Dalton's theory says that the atoms of a single element are identical in terms of their size, mass and chemical properties. For instance, if I take two oxygen atoms, we can clearly see that these two atoms are exactly same in their sizes and also their masses. And when we subject these two atoms to similar chemical reactions, they start behaving in, a, in an identical way. The next postulate, that is the fourth postulate says that atoms of different elements have different sizes, masses and chemical properties. To understand this, we can take a similar example. Let us take an oxygen atom and a nitrogen atom we can clearly see that these two atoms are of different sizes. In the sense, oxygen atom seems to be a little bigger than the nitrogen atom. And when we go for measuring the mass, we see that an oxygen atom has a little more mass than the nitrogen atom. It means that they have different sizes as well as different masses. And again, when we subject these two atoms to a chemical situation or a chemical reaction, they start behaving in a completely different manner. So let's move on to our next postulate. The fifth and the sixth postulate of Dalton's atomic theory basically speak about combination of atoms to form molecules. For example, the fifth postulate says that atoms combine in the ratio of small whole numbers to form compounds, which means that if there is an atom and they combine together always in some small whole number ratios to form a resulting compound. Let me take two, I mean four atoms of different elements like hydrogen, carbon, oxygen and chlorine. And when these atoms combine 
For example, hydrogen atoms, two hydrogen atoms combine with an oxygen atom to yield a molecule of water. And here we can clearly see that the ratio of the number of hydrogen atoms to the number of oxygen atoms is 2 is to 1, which has simple whole numbers that is 2 and 1. Again, a carbon atom combines with two oxygen atoms to give a molecule of carbon dioxide. Where again we notice that the ratio of the number of carbon atoms to the number of oxygen atoms is 1 is to 2. Again, this is a simple whole number ratio. Similarly, we can combine a hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom to have a hydrogen chloride molecule where the ratio is 1 is to 1. And same is the case for an ozone molecule where three oxygen atoms combine to form this molecule. We can see in all those four cases, the ratios in which the atoms combine are simple small whole numbers. In the sense, this, theory, this postulate essentially says that we cannot have a ratio which is something like 2.5 is to 1 or 1 is to 1.3. It will mean that uh, there is an atom whose three-fourth part is taking part in a reaction or half of an atom is taking part in a reaction which is totally not making sense. So let's move on to our sixth postulate. The sixth postulate of Dalton's atomic theory says that the relative number and kinds of atoms are always constant in a given compound. So let us take the same examples that we have taken earlier and find out what this means. Here I have a water molecule which has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. It clearly says that the number of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms is 2 and 1 which is always constant. In the sense we cannot have a water molecule which has three hydrogen atoms or two oxygen atoms. It is always two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Same is the case for carbon dioxide which has one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And we cannot have a carbon dioxide molecule for with two carbon atoms and three oxygen atoms. It's always one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Similarly, for hydrogen chloride molecule, the number of hydrogen and chlorine atoms is one and one. It cannot be more than that or less than that. It's always constant. And for ozone, it's always three oxygen atoms that combine to give an ozone molecule. It can neither be four or two. So this is all about the six postulates of Dalton's atomic theory. I hope you all had fun learning this lesson. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com. Simply easy learning.